Hey there, this is Blake Newton from UK Extension Entomology, and this is another presentation in support of our Kentucky Keepers program. So Kentucky Keepers, once again, is all about invasive species. We are learning about invasive species. We're figuring out ways to teach other people about invasive species, and Kentucky Keepers can also help to monitor invasive species. So this presentation is all about spotted lanternfly, which is an insect, and tree of heaven, which is a tree that's associated with spotted lanternfly. These are actually both invasive species, and you'll see how they are related here. So once again, here are the goals of the Kentucky Keepers program. So our goal here is for 4-Hers and 4-H staff to learn more about invasive species, teach other people about invasive species, and then actually go out and monitor for invasive species, help us find them so that we can control them. That's what we want Kentucky Keepers to do. So once again, here's some reminders of some of the things that invasive species tend to have in common. So as we've mentioned before, there are lots of different kinds of invasive species. You can have fish, you can have birds, plants, mammals. Most of these modules are about insects, but invasive species can be all kinds of different things. And here are some things that they tend to have in common, even though they can be all different shapes and sizes. They are going to be new to an area. Usually they're from a different continent or a different country, and, and there's something that has come here, and they've only been here for a few years, and they're new. A lot of invasive species can breed fast. They make lots of eggs, have lots of babies. Maybe they spread like a vine, make lots of seeds. So a lot of times they're able to breed and spread quickly. One thing that invasive species typically do is take resources from local plants and animals or kill them directly, like kudzu that steals sunlight from other plants, or Asian ladybug that kills native ladybugs. And many times our invasive species have no local enemies. So this is a new creature. It's coming here from the, for the first time. Our local predators or plant eaters are not adapted to kill it. And a lot of times our invasive species are in some way poisonous or taste bad or have spines or something like that. So many times our invasive species are not readily eaten or killed by local enemies. And then the official definition down there is that an invasive species is an organism that causes ecological or economic harm in a new environment where it is not native. So you may notice I look a little different here. That's because I'm updating this presentation because when we first created this presentation, things were a little different. Spotted lanternfly had not been found in Kentucky and now it has been found in Kentucky. So what this slide shows you is the state of Kentucky and how lots of different invasive species are either coming to our state, like right at the border, or are already here. And so the ones with the yellow arrow are things that are already here, and the ones with the dark orange arrow are things that are not quite established in Kentucky yet. And so the previous version of this, that spotted lanternfly, still had the dark orange arrow, but now it has been found in um, northern Kentucky. And so we had to update it. So the, the, the main point of this slide is just to remind you that there are a lot of invasive species coming to Kentucky kind of right now, both from the north and the south. And so that's why um, we are putting so much emphasis on this Kentucky Keepers program. There you see the spotted lanternfly circled. So as of around uh, 2020 through around 2022, the spotted lanternfly had been found in a couple of places kind of close to Kentucky but it hadn't uh, crossed over in Kentucky yet, but that changed in the summer of 2023. And now the spotted lanternfly is in the state. Um, and so the Kentucky keepers, our goal is to find it in other places so that we can keep it from spreading to even more places within the state. Um, in fact, I guess you could say that the spotted lanternfly has now been spotted in Kentucky because spotted lanternfly has its own built-in pun, which uh, we will use more in this presentation. I also wanted to mention that some other parts of this presentation haven't been updated. So if you see me saying things like uh, spotted lanternfly hasn't been found yet in Kentucky, just remember that it has been found here now. So what is the spotted lanternfly and why is it a problem? Why do we need Kentucky keepers to help out with this creature? So here's the spotted lanternfly, initials SLF. This thing is native to China. 
It was first found in the United States in Pennsylvania in 2014. So it hasn't really been here very long. It's made a lot of progress across the U.S. since then. It probably came to us in the egg stage. So these females, they lay eggs on all kinds of surfaces, boxes, maybe some kind of a tree that was bring, being brought over to sell in the United States, or just any kind of object. Um, and that was imported here from Asia. It has now been found in 11 states, so that's a lot of spread. Um, it is not in Kentucky yet, but as we said, it has been spotted in close by counties in Ohio and Indiana. So the problem that these guys cause is that they feed on plants. The adults and nymphs feed on many kinds of plants, and a lot of times they don't necessarily cause a huge problem, but when they're in crops, and in particular grape and fruit trees, um, they can cause a big problem. They, uh, they can really stunt the growth of these things and make it hard for these things to produce fruit. Also, the tree of heaven, which is another invasive species we'll talk about, it's a tree, uh, is a major host. So in places where tree of heaven occurs, which is pretty much all over the place, the spotted lanternfly gets on those, and that's a place where their populations kind of build up. It's almost like an enemy spawn location in a video game. So Tree of Heaven is places where you can sometimes find a lot of these and allows their populations to really thrive. A lot of predators like birds and spiders and other insects are simply not well adapted to feed on these things. They just haven't learned to feed on them. Um, it's possible that they might have some defensive chemicals inside them and nothing specific has been identified yet. Um, it's certainly, they certainly don't look like they would be very uh, appetizing because they, they are peeing all the time, as we'll talk about. Um, they breed quickly when they get to an area. The females lay lots of eggs, um, and they, they feed all day long. So this causes, um, this causes a lot of damage. The other thing that they do in addition to their feeding damage is that they can cause what's called sooty mold. So these things are a, a creature that feeds constantly on liquid and the liquid does not have very many nutrients. So they're almost filtering out nutrients almost in the same way that a whale is filter, filtering out plankton from the ocean. And then that water just kind of flows on through it. Same thing with these guys. So they're constantly peeing. And this pee, which is called honeydew, um, is a sugary substance that's just all over the place on these plants. And it leads to what's called sooty mold. So here's the close-up of the underside of a spotted lanternfly showing its mouth parts. Now, if you've ever looked on the underside of a stink bug, you will see something very similar. These things are actually fairly closely related to stink bugs. They have something called piercing and sucking mouth parts. So that's this structure right here. So it's just a long tube. It's basically like having a straw for a mouth. They aren't able to chew anything. They're just able to stick this straw inside plant tissue and suck juices all day long. This is what aphids do as well. So they insert this mouth part into the stems, the leaves, or the trunks of whatever plant it is that they want to eat. They just suck sap all day long. The sap doesn't have very many nutrients. So that's why they have to feed so often to get the nutrients that they want. Um, the adults and the immatures all feed in the same places and can be found at the same time on the plant, and they all do this behavior where they pee a lot. Uh, and um, so whenever you find a lot of uh, spotted lanternfly, you can see them peeing, you will see sticky stuff all over the place, and you will sometimes see this black sooty mold. So here is a close-up of that honeydew. So honeydew isn't something that's unique to spotted lanternfly. There's actually a lot of insects that do this. Any ones that suck a lot of sap and pee all over the place can cause sooty mold. Um, aphids actually do this. In fact, you may have experienced the phenomenon of honeydew and not even known it. So if you've ever been walking maybe under a tree on a hot sunny day, no cloud in the sky, and yet it seems, it seems like you're being rained on by tiny drops, that could be aphid pee, honeydew. Have you ever um, noticed tiny little sticky drops on your car, maybe after it was parked under a tree? That could be honeydew as well. So a lot of insects do this. And as this honeydew builds up, it creates a sticky substance that coats everything and can cause mold, uh, especially in hot weather. So this sooty mold, this sort of a black coating over everything, 
it tends not to hurt the plant in the long run unless just unless it just happens over and over and over again but it does it does have some effects um, by having this black substance over your leaves it makes it harder for the leaves to do photosynthesis and it can also cause fruit to rot um, which can be a big pro problem for fruit producing plants like grapes and apples and in general you've just got this black slimy stuff all over the place which can be very common for spotted lanternfly in particular because there can be so many spotted lanternflies and they're very large so there's a lot of pee which can lead to a lot of sooty mold so what this map is showing you is the distribution of spotted lanternfly and this is very up to date this is from march of 2023 and so you can see there, spotted lanternfly showed up in Pennsylvania, and it has since been spreading kind of in all directions. Um, so the blue places are where it has been found, um, where populations have, have actually been found. There's a few little um, purple dots on here where just a, a few individuals have been found, but no breeding populations. But you can see right over here in southern Indiana and southern Ohio, there's actually been breeding populations that have been found. And... Um, uh, efforts are still ongoing to make sure that those populations have been eradicated. Our department was, at, was actually involved a little bit in going up and confirming that those things were spotted lanternfly. So obviously very close to northern Kentucky and creeping up to us on the eastern side of the state as well. Um, the, this blue is expected to expand. Um, it's, it's considered unlikely that we'll be able to fully stop the spotted lanternfly, but who knows if Kentucky, for instance, is maybe the climate here is just not quite right for it. Efforts to slow it down might actually be successful. So Kentucky keepers could be really helpful with this. Wow, so here's an update. Between the time when I made this PowerPoint presentation and when I'm getting ready to put it up on the internet, um, the status of spotted lanternfly has changed in Kentucky. I decided to leave the old information that I had in the video there so you could kind of see what the progress was, but in just a couple of, uh, really a couple of weeks here, um, the status of chain has changed from spotted lanternfly not being in Kentucky to now it is in Kentucky, as some of you may have already heard. You may also notice that I look a little different between uh, now and when I recorded the previous portions of this video, but this shows a map of Kentucky, and as you can see up here, um, as you can see up here, spotted lanternfly has been found in Gallatin County. Uh, so it is now in the state. So everywhere in this PowerPoint where I'm saying uh, spotted lanternfly is not quite in the state yet or something like that, it's here now. But everything else that we say still holds true. We want to know where it is as it shows up in new places. That still gives us a better chance of keeping it from spreading to even more places. So please be vigilant. And this gives you an idea. So in Pennsylvania, they've done more research on spotted lanternfly than some of the other states. And um, they, they did some analysis of things like um, timber products, um, crops that can be fed on by spotted lanternfly. And they did uh, some estimates as to what the annual damage to spotted lanternfly is going to be in the state. And as you can see down there, it's estimated to be in the hundreds of millions. So somewhere between around $190 million of damage a year to around $330 million of damage a year. So that's, um, that's a big impact, and we don't want that in Kentucky. So here is the spotted lantern fly life cycle. So we emphasize life cycles a lot in Kentucky Keepers because it's important to be able to identify the different life stages and also know when to find the different life stages. And also, um, uh, this is a 4-H program, and 4-H um, uh, does a lot of work with around fourth grade, fifth grade, and life cycles is a part of science content in that age group. So it's, uh, this is a way to reinforce science content. So here is the spotted lanternfly life cycle. You can see up at the top there, you've got the adults. The adults are pretty distinctive uh, they're about an inch long with their, you know, the length of their wings is about an inch. They're kind of this pinkish gray with black dots, pretty distinctive creatures. And then when they open their wings, we'll show you another image of that here in a little bit. When they open their wings, it's even more colorful. 
so pretty distinctive creatures. Sometimes people confuse them with moths because moths can have kind of colorful wings too but these guys have much um, smoother harder wings than a moth does. Moth, moth wings are covered with those little scales and so they're kind of soft when you try to touch them they look kind of fluffy. A uh, spotted lanternfly is not fluffy it's kind of a smooth creature. So those are the adults. The adults are going to be active kind of in, in late summer early fall and then they um, are going to start laying eggs in the fall. Their eggs are going to be laid onto the side of objects, the sides of trees, and the eggs are covered with this gunk that helps to protect them from predators. We saw that also with um, spongy moth. And so those eggs are going to get laid sometime in the fall, kind of late fall. And then those eggs last all through the winter. The eggs then hatch in early summer and then the, uh, they hatch into nymphs. Now the nymphs are kind of similar to the adults. Their body is basically the same as the adult, just smaller. But the big difference is they don't have wings yet. So they, they, they look a little different. Um, the very young nymphs are um, around half a centimeter long. They're, very, they're pretty small. They're black with white spots and they do jump. They jump right around, they're fast moving and they uh, are feeding on they're already feeding on plants and leaves and stuff. As they get a little bit older, uh, towards the middle part of the summer, they get some red on them, as you can see on the left there. They, they're still black with white dots, but they also get some red as they get a little bit older. And then in late summer, they finally shed their skins one final time, and they turn into winged adults, and the adult stage is also able to fly and jump and then they also of course are able to lay eggs. So that is the life cycle. So here once again are those pictures of the different life stages. Identification of spotted lanternfly is particularly important for this creature because it is going to be people visually seeing it and reporting it to us. That, that is, that's the way that this is going to be found. Um, unlike spongy moth where we've got a trap for it, or unlike uh, fire ants, where you're more likely to find a mound of it. Um, it's going to be visual inspection of these actual life stages that people are, are, are likely to report them to us if we see them. So try to learn what the egg mass, the young nymphs, the older nymphs, and the adult looks like. And then uh, Kentucky Keeper's job, as we said, is to teach people what these look like. And also, if you have the app, to uh, report it to us, to actually enter, use the app, take a picture of the creature, send it to us, and then we get a GPS coordinate and a date for where you found that thing. Of course, we'll show you how that works with the app here in a little bit. So here's a close-up look at the eggs. So the eggs are covered with this substance, and um, this egg mass itself is about an inch long, so it's not super large, but it's definitely large enough to see. It just kind of looks like a smear of gunk on the side of something. Um, these The adults lay their eggs kind of in fall through the early part of the winter. And they'll put them on all kinds of upright surfaces, boxes, the sides of electrical boxes, the telephone poles, the sides of houses. Most likely, though, it's going to be on the side of whatever plant they've been feeding on. Um, they're very flat. They're kind of a tannish sort of apricotish kind of color um, and this egg mass is out all winter so this is actually a really good opportunity um, for a wintertime project if you are in maybe northern Kentucky and you want something to do in the winter going out scouting for spotted lanternfly egg masses could be a valuable uh, thing to do with 4-H'ers but then the eggs actually start to hatch in um, early summer so May and June here once again is what the babies look like they're actually kind of cute they've got these big sort of looks like they have big eyes they've got uh, they're this vivid uh, black with white spots on them they're very small they're just about five millimeters long they're going to be hatching in may and june they can jump so you, if you see something like this uh, especially if there's more than one of them on on a tree and they're jumping and hopping around and peeing um it, you could have a spotted lanternfly uh, they feed on various parts of the plant, and um, we would look for them once again on a uh, tree of heaven, but also grape trees, fruit trees, and a lot of times you'll see a lot of them at once. And they're going to continue growing through the early and mid part of the summer.
and then the uh, they they shed their they shed their skins a couple of times, just like all insects do. And then a little bit later in the summer, they're going to be what we call large nymphs. They still kind of have the same shape that they did when they were really small, but now they've got some red on them, so they're black, white, and red. Again, a very vivid looking creature. They can jump still, and these are also going to be feeding on various parts of the plants, and you're also going to tend to find a lot of them at the same time. And then the final adult stage is going to be happening in late summer. Uh, there's a picture of them with their wings open, so they're even more vividly colored with their wings open. And they're quite a, a large insect, so you can imagine if they're about an inch long, with their wings spread out, they're taking up about two inches of space. So that's that's quite a that's a fairly large insect. So the, they, these are uh, not 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 easy to miss. You will probably see them if they're around. Um, and then they start to lay eggs in uh, kind of the fall, early winter as well. And now we're going to talk about Tree of Heaven. So Tree of Heaven is a totally separate species, but it's associated with spotted lanternfly. We want um, Kentucky keepers not only to learn about this tree, but to tell us where they are. And there's lots of these trees in Kentucky. So this, is, this would be a project that anyone in Kentucky can do as a part of Kentucky Keepers is they can mark the locations of Tree of Heaven. We want to know where they are because when spotted lanternfly starts to show up, um, Tree of Heaven can be kind of a hot point for them to, um, to breed and feed and build up their populations. So it can be a place to go for scouting and also possibly to remove Tree of Heaven um, so that they have a little less resources to spread. And we don't want Tree of Heaven anyway. It's an invasive species, so Tree of Heaven also native to China, just like spotted lanternfly. It was brought on purpose to Europe and the USA in the 1700s because it's kind of a pretty tree. It's got these big kind of um, yellowish, whitish blooms and seeds. It does really well in urban areas. So remember how we said that lots of invasive species tend to do well in human kind of areas with a lot of sunlight, a lot of bare ground. Tree of Heaven is one of these. Um, it, of course, steals, suns from, steals sunlight from other plants, and it also puts some nasty chemicals into the soil that can harm nearby native plants. It can get pretty large. It's, it's, it you know, can be as big as kind of a typical yard tree, like a maple tree or something like that. It's sort of hard to kill. It makes lots of seeds, and those seeds spread all over the place, and once again is the favorite food of spotted lanternfly. And when Tree of Heaven lives in an area, it makes it more likely for spotted lanternfly populations to grow quickly. So here's a little bit about Tree of Heaven identification. Um, it's got a big compound leaf, a leaf and uh, that means that its, its leaves are actually made of more than one leaflet. So this, on this picture right here, this is not the leaf. Let me try to erase that here. Whoops. So I'll erase that part because that's not the leaf. This whole thing is the leaf. And uh, the attachment point to the branch is down here. Uh, we have a few other trees like this as well, like um, black walnut has leaves that are kind of like this as well. But the leaves look a little bit different. Um, and in early summer and midsummer, it will have, uh, in early summer, it will have um, yellow flowers. And then those, as those flowers get pollinated, um, those turn into yellowish seeds. So these, these Tree of Heaven tend to have a lot of yellow things hanging off of them throughout the summer. And they kind of have an unusual bark that sort of um, looks to me like it sort of almost like crisscrosses itself down here, as you can see. Um, I find bark on trees hard to identify, but it does have kind of a distinctive sort of bark shape. But really, the best way to learn to identify is to go to this website. This has a very nice description of how to identify a tree of heaven. Um, so uh, for Kentucky keepers, you may already know where a tree of heaven is in your area. There may be some growing in the yards of extension offices. It tends to, it tends to be found in kind of urban areas, the urban landscape growing in the front yards of people's houses, along the edges of meadows, stuff like that. Look for, uh, in, in early summer, a tree that has a lot of yellow things hanging off of it, and that could be Tree of Heaven. And, and then when you get closer, uh, study it, use that YouTube video to figure out how to identify um, the leaves to make sure you have Tree of Heaven.
And then you can also just, uh, if you think you might have Tree of Heaven but aren't sure, try to get that whole leaf and maybe break one off and put it on the ground, take a picture of it, and, and send it in as a part of your um, entry in the app. And then we can double check and see if that's Tree of Heaven or not. So what are local, state, and federal entities doing to deal with spotted lanternfly? So just like with all of our invasive species, we've got four main strategies, prevention, monitoring, education, and control. As far as prevention, there are some state-level quarantines on spotted lanternfly. Um, as you, you might remember, that spongy moth actually has federal quarantines where the federal government decides where those quarantine lines are and what the rules are. But spotted lanternfly has not been um, is not being um, controlled at a federal level yet. So states kind of have to decide what the rules are, and um, states also can't necessarily tell other states what to do um, with a state level quarantine. But within states, like in Pennsylvania, for instance, there are certain counties that are quarantined and certain that aren't, and there's rules about shipping things between those counties. So things like construction vehicles and other objects that are being moved around. Um, are supposed to be uh, inspected. And also another prevention method is just try to remove tree of heaven. This makes it less likely for a uh, spotted lanternfly to get a real, um, a real uh, kind of hold over an area. As far as monitoring, um, this is where we really depend on Kentucky Keepers and the public. So Kentucky Keepers can help monitor by using the app that we'll talk about how to use. Um, but the public, if they see um, spotted lanternfly, they can use our report a pest email and we'll show you that email again in this in this slideshow. They also do visual surveys. They just have people going out and looking at places like um, uh, grape, uh, grape orchards and places where tree of heaven are and just looking to see if they see spotted lanternfly. There's also some traps that can be put up, sticky traps to catch spotted lanternfly. These aren't as efficient as spongy moth traps because no, no really effective lures have been developed. They just put these sticky traps on a tree of heaven somewhere and just go and look and see if any tree of heaven happened to come by. And then there's even been some use of trained dogs to try to sniff out any spotted lanternfly that might be hitching a ride on something. As far as education, uh, we want to um, educate the public and Kentucky keepers as to what the different spongy moth life stages look like, just like what we were saying um, earlier in this presentation. We also want people to understand the significance of Tree of Heaven. Uh, so the more we can get the word out about what these creatures look like and what damage that they can do, the more likely we hope to get some um, people being on the lookout for them. And then as far as control, um, whenever an individual population of these things is found, uh, we try to go in and wipe them out uh, with pesticides and then um, thoroughly inspect and monitor the surrounding areas um, for any other populations that might be popping up. So those are the control strategies for this, uh, for this creature. So how can the Kentucky keepers help with spotted lanternfly? And we'll say this for all these creatures, the, the best thing that you can do, the number one thing that you can do to help is just to learn about it yourself. Um, become an expert on spotted lanternfly and tree of heaven and all these other invasive species so that when people ask you about it or when the subject comes up, you can spread the word. So learn about it yourself. And if you see the creature, you can tell us about it. The next step would be to educate other people about it. So if you are a 4-H staff member, a volunteer, or maybe even a 4-H'er, you can educate other people. Make a presentation. Um, tell people at a, a church. Tell people at your school about spotted lanternfly, what it looks like, what problems that it causes. And of course, tell people about our report, a pest email where people can attach a digital picture of something like a spotted lanternfly or a spongy moth or some of the other creatures that we talk about. Send it to us with date and location and your name and we will, uh, we will see if it needs to be investigated more thoroughly. And then the next step, if you really want to get into this, is to actually monitor invasive species. Download the ArcGIS app that we'll talk about here in a little bit and keep it with you on your phone so that when you do find spotted lanternfly, you can take, quickly take a picture of it. The, the app tells us the GPS and the date and everything right then. It gets submitted to us directly and put directly onto a map. Um, so that's something that a group of 4-Hers can do. They can go on hikes in places where 
Maybe spotted lanternfly might be likely to occur, maybe somewhere in northern Kentucky. Uh, and then report any that they see. You can also do that with egg masses uh, of spotted lanternfly. And um, as we said, you can also do that with tree of heaven. We just want to know where all the trees of heaven are in the state. So once again, use that app to report spotted lanternfly adults, egg masses, nymphs, and any trees of heaven that you know about. And you may not find any spotted lanternfly. Uh, you, you, we may not find spotted lanternfly in Kentucky for years, hopefully. We might find it this year. We really don't know. But we already know that there's trees of heaven in Kentucky. There's lots of them. But we want to know where they all are. That's something that, that any Kentucky keepers can do for us. So to, to report either spotted lanternfly or tree of heaven, you'll need the Survey123 app. And this is a free download for Android and Apple. It, it, uh, it downloads a survey and it asks you a few questions like your name, your county, and then um, you put in a, a little code for which creature you're trying to report or tree of heaven if you're trying to report tree of heaven. And then it does the GPS for you automatically. Uh, and then you will um, enter that and, and it enters the data and sends it right to our map. Now for um, Tree of Heaven and Spotted Lanternfly, if you've already watched the video on how to um, use the app to report where you put your spongy moth trap, reporting Spotted Lanternfly and Tree of Heaven is a little different. We use the same app, but we use a different uh, trap ID code. And this is, just, this is just a quirk of the system. We wanted to be able to use the same app for all these creatures, and so we had to make some compromises. But you'll see um, down here where the yellow circle is, one, one of the things on your app will say trap ID. So when you're doing spongy moth, your, your trap will actually have an ID based on your county code. You don't have to worry about that for spotted lanternfly or tree of heaven, or as we'll see in imported fire ant either. Instead, when you get down to trap ID, use this format. If you're, if you're trying to report a spotted lanternfly, you will put in the initials SLF, and then there's a little dash there, and then you will put a one, and the one is to, is to indicate that you are part of a 4-H system. And then you will put three digits after that. The three digits after that really don't matter. You can just kind of make them up. It would kind of be helpful if you don't use the same number twice in your county, so if you guys could somehow coordinate um, maybe give each 4-H a set of numbers or something like that. But honestly, if we get the same number twice, especially as long as it's in different GPS locations, it doesn't really matter. But it does need to have SLF-1 and then three numbers after it. And then Tree of Heaven, it would just be TOH-1 with three numbers behind it. And then, of course, there's also an option down on uh, when you're reporting this to take a picture. So please take a, use your phone and take a picture with the app um, to, uh, to send that in with the, um, with the entry that you're sending to us. This is what the app, uh, this, is, this is a video showing you how to download, install, and use the app to report Spotted Lanternfly and Tree of Heaven. It's actually pretty easy to use. Um, the hardest part is just making sure it's downloaded and all that stuff. Uh, but once you've got it going there, it's, it's actually pretty easy to use. So we have a whole video um, just on how to use this for making Spotted Lanternfly and Tree of Heaven um, markings. Uh, we have a different video, like I said, for Spongy Moth. The, the, the app still works basically the same for both of them. But with Spongy Moth, you're setting a trap and then going back to it. So you use the, you use the app a little differently. With Spotted Lanternfly or Tree of Heaven, you're just making one mark in one location. But please use that video. Oh, this is important. For those of you who happen to do the spongy moth trapping in 2022, we didn't have Spotted Lanternfly and uh, Fire Ant and Tree of Heaven on the app then. We just had spongy moth. So you may need to refresh your survey. Um, to make sure that it's uploaded. Uh, so if you find that you're trying to open the survey you used last year and there's no place to put in Spotted Lanternfly or Tree of Heaven, um, go backwards one step to the place where it shows all of your surveys. And you'll see that little Kentucky Science, Citizen Scientist survey and just pull down with your thumb and it causes it to refresh and that should upload the stuff that allows you to do Spotted Lanternfly, Tree of Heaven, and Fire Ant. If you have trouble with that, 
um, just let me know and we'll, we'll work you through how to refresh your app. And once again, if you have questions about any of this stuff, contact um, myself or Carl Harper. Carl, Carl Harper kind of does the tech side of this. He's also the expert on things like quarantines and inspections related to invasive species. And I'm the person who's creating the modules, uh, monitoring the modules, and uh, helping to instruct and organize 4-Hers as a part of the Kentucky Keeper's Goal. So thank you very much, and hopefully we will see you again in another one of these presentations.